Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing well and welcome back to Kian Albasar, where today I'm going to build the throne room of the Hagia Sophia slash Sultan's Palace build, which is also going to be connected to a Rapenna habitat, which I know that I've somewhat built a reputation of me being obsessed with Rapennas, but the Rapenna habitat in the throne room was always going to be there because it was there from the very concept stages of Kian Albasar. So with the the fans of the Red Band Habitat in the throne room behind us. Let's get into today's video. So before I actually get started talking about the throne that I'm building right now, I actually want to ask you guys a question because it's going to be an interesting result with the answers. How many domes are there on the Hagia Sophia slash Sultan's Palace in Kean al Bashar. And to help you guys along, I already said this in the previous video, but basically the Hagia Sophia slash Sultan's Palace in Kean al Bashar has a main dome, which sits upon a dome, which extends into two domes, which each extends into two domes as well, and each of those extensions connect to a dome each as well. How many domes are there on the Sultan's Palace? or Hagia Sophia. And the answer to this question is kind of tricky because depending on how you've watched and how specific you want to be, there's multiple answers actually. So I'm eagerly awaiting how many people get it wrong or if anyone gets the second version of the answer or the second possible answer. Also just a quick note, Gain you can't answer because I've told you the answer in the last video so uh, you can also just l watch upon the horror of people trying to figure out how many domes this building has. Again, depends on how specific you want to be with the answer or how specific you want to be when it comes to the amount of domes. With that being said, let's get into the actual throne because, well, I've looked at several thrones. First of all, of course, Western medieval thrones, which I have to say look very uncomfortable, but then I think most chairs back then were uncomfortable because they were basically just carved wood and maybe you had a pillow. But then I also looked at, of course, Islamic slash Arabian thrones which well look a lot more comfortable because there's a usually a huge amount of yellows and i also i don't know where i got this image but i wanted to find like the ottoman throne again i don't know where i got the image but i sort of remembered once seeing something that might have been a throne which basically was a bench or something like a bench which first of all of course looks a lot more comfortable because well, there's a huge amount of pillows and it basically sit on a giant pillow. But I can't find that image anymore. I don't know where it's from. Maybe I saw it in a movie or something. But yeah, I wanted to replicate that. But then I also thought like, all right, Kean al Bashar, or basically the Sultan's Palace. It's the Hagia Sophia. So it's Byzantine architecture, which is, well, of course, different f than Islamic or Ottoman or Arabian architecture. So I kind of went with a mix of both of those styles, the very uncomfortable looking chair and the sort of more bench-like feel. And here is where the Hagia Sophia becomes a very narcissistic build because I built this palace and I've told this in the future or future in the past. It would be amazing if I told it in the future, but I built the Hagia Sophia or the Sultan's Palace because of course it's not really the Hagia Sophia because it's not church, mosque, it's basically a well, throne room. But I built it kind of as my palace which I have a sort of penchant to do that when it comes to like building the main palace. I sort of approach it as my palace. So. Yeah, in a way, the Hagia Sophia build or the Sultan's Palace build is very narcissistic build. I also just then looked at like the throne and thought, all right, I need pillows. So that's what I had the most fun with actually building pillows, which just, you know, looks more comfortable because, well, when you go to the essence, it's still a uncomfortable wooden chair. Now I have a lot of pillows, <laughs> so uh, 
Yeah, I kind of went a little bit overboard with the amount of pillows until I finally realized, oh wait, if I add more pillows, then I don't really have a place to sit. Which again, shows that this throne room or the Hagia Sophia build or Sultan's Palace build is somewhat narcissistic, but uh, hey, it's my build. I can build it for whoever I like. But yeah, it was fun to build pillows. I think by the end there are six pillows. But I really like that it's somewhat of a combination of both those wooden chairs of like Western medieval slash Renaissance thrones. And then also that sort of more bench-like feel because there's basically a two-parter to the throne. You have the front bit, which is a little bit more like a chair. And then you have the sides to the back, which makes it a little bit more like a bench. And also I somewhat see the Iron Throne of Game of Thrones in it, although... Of course, this is a lot more comfortable because there are six pillows. I wanted to add more pillows. I'm probably going to add more pillows, like on benches surrounding the throne and everything, but I still have to build those things. This was actually a thing. I did not know if I was going to finish the habitat on time, which I luckily did. But um, yeah, this throne was built a little bit before I built the rest of, well, before I actually started building the Red Panda habitat. So when I basically built quite a large part of the Red Pen Habitat or well, the main features of the Red Pen Habitat on streams it was annoying because I had to find out like, oh, do these like main features actually work in the Red Pen Habitat or work in the throne room? But then I always had to angle the camera in such a way that you wouldn't see the actual throne. <laughs> I almost failed in that regard, but luckily in the end I didn't. But um, yeah, I'm very happy with the throne and it's the most narcissistic part of Keanu Alamajar. But I also finally was able to use those peacock statues. I wanted to use them, but I never found a place where. But here it's just really to add that like imposing stature to the throne because it's up from the ground so you're always looking up a little bit if you're like giving a petition or something or just want to somewhat communicate with well basically me or just the sultan so there's always that height difference and of course the throne itself is very imposing and then you basically have this entire sort of building surrounding the throne which really just breaks it apart from the rest of the throne room. I think I really succeeded with adding the really like imposing feature of like you are beneath me <laughs> when you're sitting on the throne. Which again I have to add, I think the throne of Ken Alvesar is probably a lot more comfortable than most thrones in real life. Because six pillows. <laughs> yeah I really like building the pillows. But then there comes another feature of the throne room, but now we're moving into the red panda habitats, which is, well, it's a main feature of the red panda habitat, but it's also a must have for the Hagia Sophia build slash Sultan's Palace build, because I'm building a chandelier. Because I've already told this in the past, but even with all of those windows, the Hagia Sophia slash Sultan's Palace is quite a dark building because I don't know if the windows are just not large enough or it's just the lighting in Plan Zoo, but the Hagia Sophia or Sultan's Palace in the inside is quite dark. There's not a lot of light, even though, well, I would say 50% of the walls are windows. So the chandeliers are a must. And then I thought, oh, red pandas are climbers. If I can figure out a way to have the red pandas have like their main home actually on the chandeliers, that would be a very interesting thing because that's, well, something that you don't really see a lot. So I just wanted something new because in Canal Bashar, there are three red panda habitats so far. <laughs> yes, I already said in the beginning I might be a little bit obsessed with the red pandas, but I just like that they're very lazy but also very fluffy and adorable so I'm not saying I am adorable but I really connected to the lazy part so that's I think why I really like them but I want to make sure that every of those habitats is of course different 
which makes it a little bit difficult because of course all of those weapons have somewhat the same needs. But we have one that's basically a farm, we have one where there are the floating gazebo thingies, the small gazebo thingies, which has a little bit of an inspiration from like the hanging gardens. And then here we literally have red pandas on the chandeliers. I can only imagine now that like, if I place too many red pandas, which I don't know is really a thing. Yeah, I just think of like the chandeliers just swinging with the amount of like red pandas that are on there. And yes, this is one of the smaller chandeliers. There are two large ones, which goes into the... Not the main dome, not the dome underneath it, but in the two extending domes. And yeah, it was interesting to make these things climbable or actually usable. And even though they're usable, the climbing animations are a little bit weird because I've seen red pandas just float up there. <laughs> they can get up there, which looks interesting because again, they f sometimes just float up there. And I've literally just been building and then I just saw a red pen that just float. Which was interesting. And uh, yeah, did not expect that. But then, well, there, it's great that there are climbing mechanics and there's great, it's great that there is climbing animations that most of the time look good. But when they don't work, that's when it's really funny. But now I'm also building statue. So we have moved past the throne, we have moved past the chandeliers. And now we're building a statue, because I've done that on stream, but I've never done that for a video. So that was interesting to do, this is also still part of a stream. But basically, I have somewhat improved, I would say, on building statues from like the stone, sort of angelic looking things that are very rough looking, to the more, I would say, sophisticated looking like marble statues. I've used my Demeter statue kind of as a reference, and this is how all of my statues basically start out, which is, I would say, creative puppets. Like, it's a little bit like, again, I said this in the video where I built those angelic rock statues, but it's kind of like those puppets that you sometimes see, or figurines, I would think is the better word, in your, if you're like in an art studio, those wooden figurine thingies to kind of show how the body moves. So that's how all of my statues still start. And then it's just layering. Also, yes, this is just... I can't go around this, but... Uh, yeah, the first thing that I do is build boobs. <laughs> because, I mean, they are all so far female statues or statues of women. I want to build a male statue, of course, but having the boobs just makes me know like all right this is where the like torso ends and this is where the or the chest ends and where it goes slowly into the well the rest of the body so it's really just how i like know where one section of the body ends and the other starts but uh yeah it looks kind of weird because they look ginormous without anything on it but the inspiration behind this statue is actually not greek it's not like ancient grecian or roman or anything weirdly enough part of this the inspiration for the statue was the virgin mary and then mix her with athena so you kind of get this like i would say amazon looking figure because this is also part of like the earlier sketches Kjernalbashar, although in a different form. Because the first version of the throne room was a lot more like magical and fantasy with like a huge statue in the middle, which still retains some bits of the original statue, or this statue retains some bits of the original statue in that it basically holds a brazier, which makes it so that the statue also gets light, because again, Hydra's V has a very dark place. It's sort of this, like, mystic. Kind of what I wanted to first achieve with those angelic rock statue things. But a lot more sophisticated, I would say. And a lot more, like, 
detailed, a lot more precise. Although, I am still very happy that mm, I haven't made any like nude statues. Let's just go straight to the point. A lot of, well, all of my statues so far have had like that draping of like clothes, just so that I don't have to worry too much about arms and legs because, yeah, the head is easy. The arms and legs, not, because that's where the movement in a statue usually lies. Or well, at least in the statues I've built so far. Quickly just building a dress, and then I realized, oh, one leg of the statue is kind of moving forward, so that has to be visible in the dress as well. And then there's the sash around the waist. And basically, as I said, this statue was somewhat inspired by the Virgin Mary, which don't know where I got that from, but then mixed with Athena into this sort of Islamic slash Arabian warrior figure, I would say. It's sort of like this Amazon. But then I wanted to, of course, because the Hagia Sophia or the Sultan's Palace, of course, is Byzantine architecture with a little bit of a mix with Islamic slash Ottoman slash Arabian architecture. So I wanted to represent those two styles as well in this statue. So when it comes to the actual dress, I actually went for like a, well, Greek slash sort of Roman toga, which you might not really see that much because on top of that, I placed this coat or rope, which is actually tied together with that sash. So the dress and the rope are tied together, but the rope is that more like, well, I think they're still worn today, those ropes that you usually, well, it's basically the stereotype when you think of like Arabian slash Islamic clothing, it's that rope thing. Kind of difficult, and I'm not sure if I'm really liking it, because the, how do you call it? Basically where the rope is supposed to be tied up in the front, I let that loose so that you can still see a little bit of that toga, but it has a really broad trim, I would say, I think that's the right word for it, which makes it look like it has like fur trimming, which I did not want, I just wanted the trim or the opening of the coats to be really visible so that you knew it was a coat, and then of course to add movement to the build, or to the statue, the coat or rope is flowing open because again there's movement to the statue so that has to be represented in the clothing as well and I'm not going to build the entire statue on video because that took, well I could make a whole video just on that statue but yeah, that one piece, I don't know what it is but it's um, the first of the uh, not circular, kind of like if you mix a circle with a rectangle. Don't know how the piece is called, but uh, yeah, the first one, the smallest one of that, that got a lot of use. Actually, it gets a lot of use in all of my statues because it's a lot, well, it's just very versatile if you want to like make draping or like l make it look like clothing is draped. Yeah, there's also a lot of parts to the statue that I built and then I covered up with like the hair or something. And in the original build of it that I built on stream, I actually had like a headscarf or head covering. But in the end I thought like, alright, I want to have m really movement to the statue and that headscarf was kind of flat looking. And I just really didn't make it very well. So in the end... The statue only has a veil and then the hair is just free-flowing. But the statue in the raised hand is like holding a brazier, the other hand is grasping a sword, or I don't know how to pronounce the name, but it's Skimitar if you like pronounce it the way it's spelled, but that's not the right way to say it, but it's basically one hand is on the brazier, one hand is on the sword. So kind of like this mystical vibe. And then I skip forward a whole lot of time because now we're in the actual habitat of the Red Pandas. So 
you know that this is filmed after the stream because I don't care if I am showing the throne room anymore. But you will see me a lot of times, well maybe you will see it, maybe you won't. But a lot of time I just went outside to the gardens and looked like, alright what did I do there and what do I want to bring back into the throne room. There's also a lot of squirrels because again this is a narcissistic build or an ego tripping build because it's my drone room in a way so you guys can come on audience whenever well whenever the second phase of Ken al Bashar is finished which is really weird because this might be the last video of the second phase or season of Ken al Bashar or there might be one extra video on Wednesday but I can say for certain that there won't be a video of Ken al Bashar next Sunday. So this could be the last video of the second season or Wednesday could be the last video. And if there's going to be a video of Ken al Bashar on Wednesday then it's going to be the staff facilities which is basically then going to be my way of wrapping up the second season of Ken al Bashar. And then Ken al Bashar will sort of go on a little break or hiatus where I will build on things that I haven't finished yet. So like that one random island that didn't get any foliage or that one little nook of a habitat or build that I didn't really finish yet. So it will then go on a hiatus for one or two weeks while I finish those things in the background. But I have some ideas for things I want to do in the meantime. Not a whole new zoo because as I said it's probably going to be one or two weeks so it's going to be probably a Randolph build but yeah it's going to be interesting. But yeah um, it's really weird to say it that like the second season of Canal Bashar and Canal Bashar so far has been going on for half a year. <laughs> so the second season of Canal Bashar is almost done then we will move into the third season and I, there are going to be four seasons so yeah this is going to be a one year build. I'm very looking forward to seeing the messages of this. I couldn't open the save file because my computer couldn't handle it. Because yeah Ken al Bashar I mean those statues aren't actually a lot of pieces. They are like maybe at most like 900 pieces. It's just when you add everything up it's a whole lot of pieces. I mean it still works fine. I can build in it so that's already shows a lot but um, yeah I'm already just looking forward to wh when the second season is completely finished which means the cinematic video is out, the tour is out, then I will make it, well we'll be sure to put it on the workshop and then um, yeah, then it's just waiting until I find the messages of this crashed my PC <laughs> because it's so many pieces. And here is another thing that I need to, to talk about actually. But when I built the statues I actually wanted to make them climbable so that the red pandas actually climb on the statue to get to the chandeliers on top. Which is where their sleeping area is and where most of their toys actually are so that they are mostly actually found on the chandeliers. They don't spend a lot of time actually on the ground. I couldn't make it work. The statues just because of all the different shapes that are in there they would just be impossible to make climbable without them looking really weird. Also here you see the finished statue because I didn't put that in the actual time lapse or building off. So I basically just made some platforms for the red pandas to climb up on so that they would eventually be able to reach the chandeliers. And I'm very happy and I still see red pandas floating up there because climbing animations in Planet Zoo most of the time they go well. But when they go wrong they go really wrong. And then it's funny because then you just see a red panda climbing upside down or you will see them floating up or sometimes you see them jump and they jump across the entire Hagia Sophia. It was an interesting time to build 
but um, I think that's going to be it for today. I don't really have much more to say. So, again, I'm very looking forward to seeing your guys' answers to how many domes there are on the Hagia Sophia or the Sultan's Palace in Hagia or in Kern al -Bashar. I said Hagia Sophia too many times this uh, video, so now that's just hardwired into my brain. But there's not going to be like a like ending video or like showing the end results because again this could be the last video or it could be the second to last video depends wholly on my mood going into the next week but yeah then it's basically kind of shot is going on the down low for one or two weeks until it returns with a cinematic video a tour of the royal palace of bashar and then the well game or the zoo is going to be on the workshop and it's going to start melting pcs which i'm looking forward to <laughs> that might sound very narcissistic or sadistic yeah I said some words too many times this video and now they just won't leave my brain but anyway that's going to be it so i hope you enjoyed the video if you do i hope to see you back in the next video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more of me and that's going to be it. So have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.